The animated film Transformers 1 is winning over the franchise's fans and critics, with the entire movie set on Cybertron. Transformers 1 has plenty of Easter eggs and nostalgia callbacks for diehard Transformers fans. Today, at Movie Recap Pro, we give you a glimpse at all the hidden details you missed in Transformers 1. What's interesting about Transformers 1 is that it recounts the early days of the Autobots and Decepticons. This is a time much before the robots actually started fighting each other. When Optimus Prime was just a miner called Orion Pax, Megatron was another miner who was initially known as D-16. Orion Pax and D-16 are introduced as friends who later turn into enemies because of their different philosophies. D-16 is a specific name choice for Megatron's younger self because this was the Japanese serial number of the original Megatron. We are talking about the Generation 1 Megatron toy from 1984, which was released by the Japanese toy company Takara. The D in D-16 stands for Destron, the Japanese title for Decepticons in the original ads and TV series. As for the number 16, Megatron was the 16th release in the Takara toy line. Even D-16's helmet is an Easter egg for collectors of older toys. Throughout Transformers 1, D-16 has a rounder, dark gray helmet. It's only after becoming Megatron that his helmet has a shinier silver finish and a more rectangular shape. While the angular helmet has been the definitive look for Megatron since the Generation 1 series, the round helmet from Transformers 1 is a deep cut from Transformers history. Back in 1984, when the Transformers toys were fairly new, Megatron's prototype design in an animated commercial featured a similar dark gray helmet, which was later upgraded in the actual toy. Even the Generation 1 Marvel comic series had a similar design that later gets referenced in the 2024 animated film. In Transformers 1, Alita 1 uses the word GoBots as an offensive insult. She even ends up calling Orion Pax and D-16 two idiot GoBots. This is a meta-reference to the Japanese toy line that was launched by Tonka in 1983, a year before Hasbro came out with Transformers. This central concept is the same. Tonka's GoBots are also robots that can transform into vehicles, with the robots divided into factions like Guardians and Renegades. But as Hasbro sales increased, Tonka struggled to continue the GoBots brand. The GoBots stopped rolling out in 1987, and Hasbro acquired the toy line in 1991. After Hasbro's acquisition, GoBots has been established as an alternate universe in the Transformers franchise. So maybe Alita One's comments might be more than just a meta joke. They could indicate that GoBots also exist in the world of Transformers 1. Hopefully, we can meet some GoBots in any future sequels to this animated film. You've got the T, you've got the Arise Less Prime. Transformers 1 is the second theatrical animated film in the series, released 38 years after Transformers, the movie. The 1986 animated classic isn't just known for its dramatic voice acting and shocking character deaths, but also its inspiring soundtrack. One of the songs is even referenced in a scene from Transformers 1, when Orion tells Pax in the Mines, you don't have the touch or the power. This is a direct callback to the lyrics of the Stan Bush song, The Touch, which includes the lyrics, you got the touch, you got the power. The Stan Bush song is an all-time classic for fans of Transformers. The movie, as it plays at a crucial moment when Optimus Prime is single-handedly fighting multiple Decepticons. The song again plays at the end of the 1986 film when Hot Rod unleashes the Matrix of Leadership. Even Transformers 1 composer Brian Taylor tries to sneak in a couple of musical references in his score for the film. The title track, The Fall, in particular, references a section of music from the 1986 film score titled The Death of Optimus Prime. Where are you? Where is AA on right now? Comedian and actor Keegan-Michael Key voices B-127 the Autobot who would later become Bumblebee. Key initially gained fame for Key and Peele, a sketch comedy show he wrote and acted in with Jordan Peele. In one popular skit from the series, he plays a teacher who has a habit of mispronouncing names, so a simple name like Aaron hilariously turns into Aeon. This scene became a classic meme template and is yet again referenced in Transformers 1 with one of B-127's homemade robots named Aatron. The name can lead to a chuckle or two amongst fans of both Transformers and Key and Peel. Let the humans serve us or perish. 
John Hamm's Sentinel Prime acts as a mentor for the heroes of Transformers 1. But as the ruler of Cybertron, he also has ulterior motives. The last time Transformers fans saw Sentinel Prime in a movie was in 2011's Transformers, Dark of the Moon. The animated Sentinel Prime interestingly wields a double-bladed sword, the same weapon as in the 2011 movie. As for other animated depictions of Sentinel Prime, the Cybertron ruler's color patterns keep changing, but in Transformers 1, Sentinel Prime has an orange and blue look, which is very similar to his portrayal in the 2007 series Transformers. Animated. Come on, let's play. Orion Pax and D16 show their real strength at the Iacon 5000 race. Even though they are ordinary miners, they compete against Cybertron's fastest and most powerful Transformers. While we can't get a clear look at the racers, the race leaderboards mention many iconic Transformers from other movies and shows. These include Mirage, Wheeljack, Blowout, and many more. Even among the spectators, eagle-eyed audiences will be able to get a brief look at the Autobot RC. In fact, RC can be briefly seen in the ending as well, as she's one of the robots who receives a transformation. Fan-favorite Autobot Ratchet is also briefly mentioned after the race. Ratchet doesn't appear himself, but a speaker announces that all injured racers must go and see Dr. Ratchet. It makes sense for Ratchet to be a doctor, as he will go on to become the chief medical officer for the Autobots. Look, there's Starscream and your Shockwave and Soundwave. In Transformers 1, the Decepticon Starscream is depicted as the leader of the Cybertronian High Guard. Veteran character actor Steve Buscemi plays the character in a voice cast that is led by A-list stars like Chris Hemsworth, Scarlett Johansson, and Brian Tyree Henry. But while Transformers 1 is the first Transformers rodeo for these actors, Buscemi also had a brief role in 2017's Transformers, The Last Night. In the Michael Bay film, Buscemi voiced a scavenger Autobot called Day Trader. You want to pee for me? No, I want Orion Pax's heroism. Orion Pax's heroism is evident from very early on in Transformers 1, when he bravely saves a miner during a tunnel explosion. Even though this miner survives the collapse, he ends up losing a leg. The robot is revealed to be Jazz, an Autobot who has fought alongside Optimus Prime in many animated series. In the Michael Bay movies, Jazz had a brief appearance, as he's soon killed by Megatron in the first movie. It's time to show him we are more than meets the eye. Even those who don't know much about the Transformers would have heard of the toy line's original tagline, Transformers. More than meets the eye. Orion Pax says this when D-16 asks why he wishes to participate in the Iacon 5000 race. After all, the race includes many participants who can transform into other vehicles, while Orion is just a minor robot at that time. But his optimism shines in the scene as he tells D-16 that he's more than meets the eye. You betrayed yourself. No. In Transformers, Dark of the Moon, Optimus Prime killed Sentinel Prime by shooting him down. But in Transformers 1, Sentinel meets a dramatic end at the hands of Megatron this time, who splits him into two halves, a gruesome death that is reminiscent of how Megatron killed Jazz in the Michael Bay Transformers. In the 2007 film, Megatron ripped Jazz in two with his own hands. While fans might have forgotten that death, it makes an unexpected comeback in the animated movie. So, from niche musical deep cuts to name-dropping several iconic robots and even dropping a nod to GoBots, Transformers 1 has plenty of details that you might have missed on first viewing. Transformers 1 might have seemed like just another franchise cash grab, but with genuine fan service and a heartfelt storyline, it has proven that it is more than meets the eye. Did you enjoy Transformers 1? And are you looking forward to another entry in the series? Thank you for watching Movie Recap Pro and stay tuned for more movie news.